Welcome to episode 14 of Cougars on Cougars. We're happy to be here and we're going to jump right into it with our quote of the week. This is from Maya Angelou and it was posted by Tanner Mangum this week on Twitter. A leader sees the greatness in other people. You can't be much of a leader if all you see is yourself. Very wise quote from Tanner. Jess was wondering if he was subtweeting anyone. <laughs> maybe. I don't know if he's the type to subtweet, but maybe he is. Not really. I don't know. Maybe he <laughs> is, but it's a great tweet about leadership and we uh, hope to see some more great leadership from him this season. Uh, we also wanted to talk, we uh, did a poll on Twitter because we yeah. talked about the makeup of the basketball team last week and who we thought might be captains. Obviously, it's way too early, but we talked about it anyway. Uh, <laughs> and we unanimously agreed on Nick Emery and Kyle Davis as captains. But our third one, we had um, some discrepancy on. We put out there Corbin Kafusi, Elijah Bryant, and TJ Hawes as your options. And Elijah won the poll with 54% of the votes, and that's kind of who Jess and I said that we would pick. Mm -hmm. um, but Robbie threw out Corbin, who was someone that we had kind of overlooked, and, and there was something that kind yeah. of changed your mind. So I was thinking about it this week, and then I saw Nate Austin's post about Corbin on Corbin's birthday, and he, he wrote this. He said, the dude works tirelessly to get stronger and improve his craft. He always has a smile on and is always laughing at your jokes. He goes out of his way to help you or lift you up. He can often be found studying the scriptures on flights. I can't wait to watch him dominate next year. So that sort of maybe changed my opinion a little bit. I think Corbin would be a good fit for a captain, but... Yeah, I think we just didn't think about it, but like hearing that description, that kind of sounds like someone you want as your captain. Yeah. So anyway, something to think about. Um, so we're going to transition to talk of the town now, and we're starting with uh, some news out of basketball, which we are bummed about. Jake Toulson is transferring. So yeah. uh, he's... He played just in a few games last year before he left mm -hmm. the team for, I think, I think medical reasons was what they ended up calling it. Yeah, right after we talked about it, of course, the next day it comes out. It comes out. out. And we're trying to decide, like, why or where do we think he's going to go? We wouldn't be surprised if he's heading back to Arizona yeah. somewhere. He had an offer from ASU. I think he and his fiance are both from there. Arizona, yeah. So that would make sense to me, but... Well, that was the only thing that would make sense to us because we are lacking at that guard position, so... We kind of heard playing time was a reason, but... Well, I, I playing time is usually the reason, but for him it would have been weird if it was because we're so slim at guard. So anyway, best of luck to Jake Tolson. We're uh, anxious to see where he's going and hope that we can uh, fill that depth, guard depth position out um, with him right. gone. The other thing was IMG Audio posted this week their top 10 rankings and Gregor Bell's at number two. So just behind the top spot, which West Virginia holds. So maybe we can get him up to number one next year, but congrats to Greg. Yeah, that's pretty big. So uh, good job listening to Greg, the voice of the Cougars. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle Collinsworth uh, made his debut in the Portsmouth Invitational. Well, he made his debut and they're done now. I think we said his team went two and one and he had a pretty good performance, at least in the first game is the one we have the stats for. He got seven points, 11 rebounds, two assists, and two steals. So Yeah, I think he ended up, though, with like 14% field goal shooting. It was like two hmm. of 18 or something. Well, Not great, so he'll have to work on that, and <sighs> hopefully he'll get another chance to show off his skills. So Yeah, and hopefully those uh, rebounds impress the scouts, but yeah, I guess poor shooting has kind of haunted him throughout his career, hasn't it? A so bit. Anyway, what else? We've got a couple posts from Jimmy this week. One was that his wife posted a picture of him. It says, this is not a drill. He has oh gone gosh. from cut-off capri sweatpants and now to short shorts over leggings. And he is totally serious. So When you're an athlete, man, I guess you can wear whatever you want. Ask Zach Selyus, right? True. Very <laughs> true. Um, also sticking with Jimmer, uh, he posted an Instagram this week because it was Kobe, uh, the Black Mama's last game, and he said that his first NBA game ever was against Kobe, and it's this picture of the two of them on the court, uh, which is just a kind of cool coincidence. I didn't actually cool. know that his first game was against him, and now neither of them are in the NBA, so mm. ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Zach Stelius posted this week a cute little picture of him as a kid um, <laughs> on so one of cute. his friend's birthdays. He's so, so blonde. He is really blonde, and he looks really tall <laughs> <laughs> as a kid. Yeah, so. always has been tall, I guess. Um, another thing for Zach is that he uh, broke a BYU record for most effective field goal percentage at 68.5, nearly 70% effective in field goal percentage, which is just unheard of which yeah. is you know why it's a new record so congrats to him <sighs> have fun in Iowa yeah we will miss you gosh <laughs> it hurts it hurts it um let's see so other things this week is that Peyton Dastrup's sister posted about him um coming home soon mm -hmm. so she said in just a month and 23 days and that was 
so last Sunday week sometime. So we calculated he should be home about June 8th. We think. So we are looking forward to that. Yeah, and, and there's, getting uh, he's getting some him. serious air in that picture, so yeah. we'll put that up. Uh, the other thing that happened last week was the BYU basketball banquet where they uh, kind of closed the year and honored the seniors and honored the team. And um, BYU basketball posted a status just showing, showing what the banquet kind of looked like, but we got also – the, yeah, the Greg Bell posted the actual award winners. Not a ton of surprises there. Um, best conditioned players were mm-hmm. Kyle Collinsworth and Corbin. Sixth man was Zach Selyus. Chase felt like he uh, should have gotten some of those best conditioned awards. He, I think he told Jeremy Jordan he wanted to win all of the awards <laughs> and thought he should have. Even the sixth man one. That so sounds about that's right. Chase for that you. That sounds like Chase. Uh, so. We also got some posts from Instagrams um, about the banquet. Nate Austin did a post of him with the seniors just talking about how lucky he feels to go out with these three guys and um you know that they'll always be brothers so that was sweet and we had one from kyle davis too yeah kyle davis also posted saying that it was a little bittersweet for that banquet but that they're now looking on to next season and that there's great things ahead for cougar fans our lone senior there he is so there he is with his wife and they have a baby that's due in july so come next basketball season he will have a child speaking of uh, different phases of life in the basketball team we've got nick who's getting married in uh, like 10 days yeah. almost and uh he had a bachelor party over the weekend and jackson emery posted to instagram Great this picture. picture it says parting it up for next bachelor party hashtag go carts and uh, you can see zach sellies in the picture it just looks like a good old time <laughs> yeah good times tj house also tweeted out one chapter closes and a new one begins hashtag 30 new name new number so yeah. he's apparently got a new number which is number 30 and he changed his twitter handle tj house 30 now which i think is a big deal like you don't i mean i don't really take changing your twitter handle lightly and we were talking about like why he would have changed his number and we had a couple of opinions because his dad marty yeah. was number 11 at byu so we thought that maybe he would not want to have that same number yeah, he was 11 in high school yeah TJ so was. and then tyler was three so add a zero to it so 31 is taken by Braden shaw anyway we don't and really we know, think but... three is taken by elijah yeah so uh, but apparently he doesn't want to be the same number as uh ty or his dad so not... good for him and we're excited for the new chapter like he said yes yeah, speaking of elijah yes <laughs> he always likes to post his model, model pictures, pictures, so we got to thank him for that. And we it's his birthday today, week. so special shout out. And if you don't follow him on Instagram, you're missing out on some yes. good videos of him dancing. Dancing So videos. highly recommend. He's Elijah Bryant 3 on Instagram. Yes, and we have determined that he should exclusively wear suits because he rocks those And he's those not suits. on the court, but yeah. Okay, yeah. moving on to football, we have another transfer that's happening, and this is Jordan Prater. He's a defensive back who saw um, a little bit but not a ton of playing time last season. He says that he is transferring and that it's not his option. Uh, I think he means that it's not his choice. So they apparently asked him um, to transfer some reason. He did run into some suspension problems for disciplinary reasons last year. So uh, we always will miss the depth in the secondary. Uh, best of luck to him. Yeah, good luck. Um, West Virginia kicker Josh Lambert has been suspended for the first three games of next season, including that third game is yep, against BYU. Against us, so, and he's so. one of the best in the country. So, I mean, I don't know how much of an edge it will give us, but we'll take what we can get, That's right? Um, yeah. Next, we have coaches with daughters. We need to do the math and figure out how many daughters the BYU yeah, coaching staff has amongst themselves. But uh, it was prom in Utah over the past weekend. And we saw a couple tweets. The first one was from Mike Empey, and he send, was sending his daughter Savannah off to prom, and he said that she's usually a tomboy and a really great goalkeeper, but she just looks gorgeous in these photos, and he's a cute dad. And then Ben Cahoon posted, shotgun is loaded, sending my three <laughs> beautiful girls to prom tonight. Three! So He has like, three, Ty has yes. four, there's enough daughters to go around. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> so prom season, it's also wedding season. Mitchell Jurgens posted a photo of him with his fiance, uh, Shana Ridley, and she's the sister of Skylar Ridley. And he says, tis the season of weddings and 75 days until his, so. We should be getting a lot of yep, actual wedding photos Wedding pictures really to soon. come. Speaking of upcoming weddings, we've got some Alexa Gray updates. Yep, she posted a picture this week of well, her Well, BYU finals. posted it. It was from her account first, and then BYU reposted it. Oh, they reposted it. it. Mm-hmm. But she was taking a picture for her final project, and then she also posted another one this week um, of her and Tanner, another engagement picture, but it said, good luck to Bay at his first day of work. I can't believe she called Domo. him Bay. They are so 
millennial. I don't even know, uh, but <laughs> Tanexa. There's your Tanexa <laughs> update for the week. Yep. Um, and then the last thing that we wanted to add, and this uh, just broke late uh, Monday night, but uh, BYU football is going to continue doing the firesides, it looks like, in a limited scope. They're not going to do and them during the, the games. It, it's going to be during spring. So, uh, so we'll it, post a link to the Deseret News article that kind of outlines it. But Yeah, I only glanced, but it seems like they're doing it in conjunction with the Fan Fest, maybe? Um, so. Yeah, I'm not sure, but they're doing it in a lot of locations where the games are going to play. Like, I know they're playing in Michigan. I mean, not playing, but doing a fireside in Michigan and mm. D.C. as well as playing there later. So, cool. we'll see how that works out. Good news for those who like week. those. Yep, there's yeah. your loaded talk of the town. So on Monday, the post-spring depth chart came out. So this is, I mean, it's nice to see kind of where everyone stands. Obviously, a lot of things are going to change before fall, but we just mm-hmm. wanted to talk about um, some of the things that stood out to us. And I think very first, at the very top of the page, you have your quarterbacks. And we were surprised because Taysom is actually before Tanner. Which, and who knows how significant that is? I, well, it, yeah, I mean, who knows? It's just kind of weird. Like, I think that this wouldn't be a surprise come fall when Taysom is, uh, you know, back to 100% theoretically, but he hardly did spring fall. I mean, he participated, um, but not as much as Tanner, and he's at number one. So I don't know if that's just kind of a favoring your senior captain kind of thing or what, but... There's a bunch of guys that aren't on here, obviously, because maybe they weren't participate, participating in spring, mm-hmm. so they should come on the chart later. Yeah, we're hoping we'll see Tejan on there, and I mean, obviously, Handsome isn't on there, um, but Troy Warner is. He's um, at the first spot for, we think that means left corner. Um, we're not, like, super up on our depth chart lingo, <laughs> but it's just too deep, so you have your um, quarterbacks, running backs, Jamal is obviously first at running backs, and then Algie's first at fullback. Um, some good looking receivers. It looks like we're going to have a little bit of depth there Mm -hmm. and there are tight ends. So that was something that a lot of people were excited about. That's new. There was another observation about the seniority. Yeah. There's a lot of seniors on here, which is good. I think it's good to have some senior leadership, a lot of seniors in the starting spots. So yeah, I think overall it's just exciting to see, to see where we stand. So, um, we're not reading too much into this because a million things could change. A lot of time in between now and some September. days. But uh, there you have it. There's your post spring depth chart. So, we are going to introduce a new segment that we are calling Why I'm a Fan. And in this segment, we'll have on different fans to tell us why they're a fan and then to also share some stories about their experiences. So, today we have Justin Hicken here with us. He's Justin underscore Hicken on Twitter. So, give him a follow. Mm-hmm. And he's going to tell us why he's a fan. Yeah. So let's we start first want to know why you're a fan and when you went to BYU. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Great to be here. Uh, I attended BYU. I did undergrad from '02 to '09 with a uh, a mission in between there. Uh, so five years total, and I've just always loved sports. And as soon as I came to BYU, I adopted all BYU sports. <laughs> awesome. And you have a story to tell us. From a real good one. Yeah, really absolutely. Good so I, I don't tell this very often because it can tend to go pretty long. But this involves something that happened uh, back in 2009 when BYU traveled to play University of Oklahoma uh, in Jerry's house in Dallas. And, uh, <laughs> as time goes on, you kind of naturally started to do the people were like, well, what are you in here for type that you see on TV right, right. shows? So we're going around the room, it gets to me, and that was really, really when I found out that all these Oklahoma fans had been drinking, and that was right. why they had gotten arrested. It gets to me, and I tell them, I said, well, I told them my story. I said, after BYU won the game, me and my buddy ran onto the field, and that's when they got us. And it was dead silent in the cell. And all of a sudden, one of the Oklahoma fans speaks up, and he goes, wait a minute. He says, you mean to tell us that OU lost? And it was the first time I had realized that everybody that got arrested for being drunk got arrested for being drunk during the game, and not after After. the game was done. I was the only guy that got arrested after the game was over. So naturally, when BYU took the lead with, what was it, a minute and a half to go, or under two minutes, they... They had no idea. I mean, some of them might not even have known that Sam Bradford got injured. Uh, so Probably not. It never occurred to them that 
Oklahoma might lose that game. And I looked at him and I said, guys, yeah. I said, I (laughs) wouldn't be here (laughs) if it didn't happen. That story. (laughs) It's so good. That wasn't even all of it. No. That's just a little tease. Yeah, so we will have to post the rest of it separately, so there will be a link below, but you will definitely want to listen to it. It's quite long, but it is so worth it. Lots of, like, twists and turns, even. Yeah, yeah. And if you have any stories like that, we, like we said, this is a new segment we're starting, so reach out to us. We would love to put you on and hear why you're a fan. Any cool stories of players you've met or just experiences that you've had they don't have to be as crazy as this in fact we'll be really surprised if they are but thanks for to justin for coming on that's all we have for this week um coming up this weekend we have rugby in the semifinals versus arkansas state at home one o'clock so be there should be nice weather yeah yep they beat dartmouth in the quarter so come out and support them we have a lot of stuff going on at home this weekend so no shortage of byu sports to support there's the clarence robinson track and field invitational that runs from Thursday through Saturday, so show up and support the track team. And then BYU is hosting the MPSF semifinals for volleyball. So on, um, this is Thursday. Thursday, we'll have at 5 p.m. UCLA is playing Long Beach. And then at 7.30, we'll have BYU against UCSB. So really yep. good games this this Thursday. Yep, and we hope to win that tournament. So uh, also we have a home series coming up for baseball against Creighton. They play on Friday at 6 p.m. and then on Saturday at noon. So they beat Utah last week, like 14-3, to I think the score was. And Miller Park saw its third largest ever crowd. It was standing room only. So it's really cool to see the support around the baseball team. They did drop a couple after beating Utah, uh, but then they won another one. So Lost their first series, but they're keeping the mustaches. Yes, mustache mafia will carry on. But uh, keep showing up to support them. That's really fun. So uh, now we'll let you know the show. This week's show was brought to you by the Seattle Storm for drafting <laughs> our very own Lexi Rydalt. Also by Firehouse Subs. So we have, in fact, confirmed <laughs> from Mitch Matthews that that's where the Nebraska hot sauce is from. And also one extra sponsor, the number 24, because it is Mary's 24th birthday today. <laughs> so make sure you wish her happy birthday. Thanks. Uh, may you always stay loyal to the white and blue. For Jess, I'm Mary. We'll see you next week.